So let's talk about the pitching moment um, on an airfoil. And uh, for this, we're just going to zoom in on uh, on an airfoil here in our coordinate system. Remember, we're using X uh, pointing aft and Y up. And then our airfoil uh, will look something like this. Um, so our chord line lies along the X axis. And uh, and here's the origin of our coordinate system right there. Uh, now remember the force. Um, I can I can integrate the uh, the pressure and the shear. If I were to zoom in on on uh, a, a portion of this airfoil, we have pressure that's always acting normal to the surface, and we have a shear force uh, that's uh, that's a tau there representing shear force that's uh, acting along the surface of the wall. Okay, so tau at the wall, that's our shear force at the wall. And um, so we can walk along this airfoil and integrate all of the pressure forces that are acting normal and all of the shear forces that are acting tangential to the surface and uh, and sum all of that up and we will get a a global uh, force coefficient and, and or excuse me, just a, a force vector. And I can I, I can uh, place that force vector anywhere on this x-y coordinate system. It turns out that that force is independent. Um, uh, so I'm just going to, of, of location, so I'm just going to draw that global force here at the origin. Okay, that's a capital F. Uh, that's the force at the uh, at the origin. And, uh, and we can divide that into axial and normal components. So I can uh, say there's this much of the force in the axial direction and this much of the force in the uh, normal direction. And, uh, and of course, you know, you could connect these, the ends of these uh, vectors there, that, that's the magnitude in the axial direction is in the x direction and the magnitude of the normal force in the y direction. Uh, but but the total force is the summation of those two, okay. And then uh, and then we also we sometimes like to rotate those forces by alpha. Let's say that our incoming velocity is at some angle of attack to the x axis there, and uh, and so we can actually rotate those forces and talk about the forces that are perpendicular to the uh, uh, to the uh, free stream velocity and the force uh, that's in the same uh, direction as the, uh, as the free stream velocity. The, the force that's in the same direction is what we call drag, and the force that's perpendicular is what we call lift, okay? And uh, so if we know axial and normal, uh, we can get the lift and drag. Uh, that's just a simple change of variables in using, uh, uh, using sines and cosines of alpha. And, uh, and same with, uh, if we know lift and drag, we can get the normal and axial by rotating it back through alpha. So um, in fact, let me just write those equations down really quickly. So the lift is equal to the normal force times the cosine of alpha uh, minus the axial force times sine of alpha. Drag is equal to axial cosine alpha uh, plus normal sine alpha. And uh, and then if we knew lift and drag and wanted to find normal and axial, the, the normal force is lift times cosine alpha uh, plus drag sine alpha. And uh, axial is drag times cosine alpha minus lift sine alpha. Okay, so we can, uh, we can either get the lift and drag or normal and axial. Okay, so let's now talk about the, the pitching moment. The pitching moment's a little bit different, uh, and I'm gonna uh, put this in, in blue here. So here's our origin, and, uh, and uh, when, we, when we walked around this airfoil and summed up all of the forces, it didn't matter about what point uh, we were summing those because uh, those just had a direction. So, so each of these, uh, these forces as we integrated along had some, some force in the axial direction and some force in the normal direction. And we basically summed those up in order to get uh, normal and axial or the, the total force. But uh, when we talk about a moment, we, we are summing those forces about some location on the airfoil. So uh, a lot of times we'll choose the origin. In a, in a computational world, it's, it's, it's nice to choose the origin. Uh, if you're in a wind tunnel, this is equivalent 
to somehow pinning the um, pinning the airfoil somewhere or or setting some sensor. Um, and I'll just I'll just draw a, a pin for example. Uh, if we were to pin this airfoil here at at the uh, leading edge, then um, and and put some sensor at that location, we could figure out how much moment the aerodynamics were creating about that point. You know, what was the strength of the torque basically um, on that airfoil about that point? Uh, okay, so let's take off our uh, our pinpoint there, but. Um, anyway, we need to choose a location. And so if I zoom in on this uh, surface over here, what we're doing basically is we're walking around the airfoil and we're saying, I've got some distance R from the point of interest, which, which usually is, is the origin here. Um, but uh, I've got some, some point of interest and I know the, the distance from that point to, uh, to this point on the surface that I need to... Uh, compute the moment about this point and it turns out that that at the surface that uh, there's a total force I'll, I'll use a little f vector total total force uh, due to pressure and shear and uh, if I take the cross product of that force with this radius then I can get the moment uh, that that is um, creating about this point okay so as we integrate so, so we're going to integrate now along this whole surface we're going to walk along the whole airfoil and um, integrate the, pr the shear and the pressure forces about some location. So let's choose the leading edge and, um, and we'll get some uh, pitching moment. So I'll just draw uh, that moment there. We, we use a little m. And, um, uh, and now, you know, we've measured that about some point, but sometimes it's useful to know what the pitching moment is what if we had summed that about some other location? So I'm just gonna put some other location here uh, and say that I'd like to know what the pitching moment is at that location. And by the way, we're gonna subscript the this first moment with a zero uh, or an O, meaning that's the pitching moment about the origin. And now I'd like to know the pitching moment at another location. Well, it turns out that I don't need to reintegrate my uh, my forces and moments around this, I can actually just take the known pitching moment at this location as well as the the normal and axial forces or this total force and uh, and compute what the pitching moment would be if I were to uh, compute it about that point. And uh, it turns out I can actually even move the forces over there. If I were to to measure lift from that location or or normal and axial forces, uh, they would have been exactly the same as, uh, as they were computed about the origin because uh, those forces are independent of where I'm computing them about. It's only the moment that depends on this location. Okay, so uh, so let's write the, the equation for the, the moment at any location is equal to the moment about the origin. Uh, and then I this is just a statics problem where, uh, you know, the moment I can just move over to that point uh, and then I'm going to take the normal force times the change in x, and and uh, a normal force will create a positive pitching moment about that location with positive x. So I would say uh, it's the moment at the origin plus uh, x times the normal force, and uh, and then as I move from from this location to here, if I have some positive axial force, that actually creates a negative pitching moment uh, when I get to this location. And so it's going to be the axial force times the the y distance there. Uh, and that's gonna create a negative pitching moment. So it'd be minus y times axial force. So this equation now tells me the pitching moment at any location on the airfoil. Uh, if, I know, if I know the pitching moment at the origin, uh, and I also know the normal and axial forces, or if I know uh, lift and drag, I can get the normal and axial from this equation here. In either case, uh, I can get normal and axial, and, uh, and if I know the pitching moment, then I can plug this in to find the pitching moment at any arbitrary uh, x and y location on the airfoil. Okay, so I can just plug in any x, y location right there and get the pitching moment at, at that location. So 
uh, in airflow analysis, a lot of times we end up working with uh, results that are just right on the chord line here. Uh, but uh, but that's just a, a that's uh, it, it just turns out that um, that a lot of important things happen very near the chord line. And so a lot of times we just assume that we're working on the chord line. But in general, this is the equation here. Uh, that we're interested in uh, for pitching moment, and it depends on both your X and Y location. So part of the reason that we we sometimes just look at the chord line is, um, let's just look at the components of this equation here really quickly. Um, so if you look at the X offset, um, X can go, uh, you know, from, from the origin all the way back to the chord. Usually the Y offset of this region that we're interested in is pretty small compared to X because these airfoils are rather thin. They're usually on the order of 8 to 12 percent thick uh, percent of the cord, okay? And so um, if you look at X compared to Y, X is usually much larger than Y. And, uh, and, and also our normal force is, uh, is closely related to lift. So, so it's, uh, it's an offset of you know, lift times the cosine of alpha. It also has some drag sine alpha, but, but uh, in general, our normal force is much greater than our axial force. And so you've got two large values here, x and n, and you've got two small values here that are multiplied together that even make something smaller and something larger here. And so um, a lot of times we'll just look at the pitching moment along the chord line because uh, it doesn't vary significantly uh, in general as you move off of that chord line, at least for small deviations in Y, which is usually what we're interested in. So in some textbooks, you'll see that the pitching moment has been truncated to only include uh, these first two terms. Uh, and that's technically just the pitching moment along the chord line, um, where the origin is also on the chord line. Uh, but uh, but but we're going to see that in computations or, or approximations for like the aerodynamic center, for example, sometimes we uh, the traditional approximations will leave out this term here because uh, that is small. So we'll talk about that in a following video.